Today we have the 2020 Nissan LEAF, the all-electric hatchback from Nissan with new sounds, new tech, and it's loaded with safety features. This is going to be a long video. If you want to know exactly where we are in the video, I'll put timestamps in the description below. That way you can go to wherever you want, but if you really want to learn about this Nissan LEAF, check out the outside, the inside, and go for a test drive. Be sure to stick around. Let's get started. Now as we take a look at everything on the outside of the LEAF, if you saw the last generation LEAF, it was quite eccentric. It definitely did not really fit Nissan's lineup. Well, this generation of the LEAF and this 2020 model looks pretty nice considering where it came from. Our Plus model gives us a chin spoiler and aerodynamic overall body style. Halogen fog lights are going to be standard up to the SV trim. Halogen headlights are going to be standard on the lower trims, but then you can get LED headlights optional on the SV and standard on ours with the LED signature light but you'll still get halogen fog lights on the SV trim and up. Wheels are gonna be pretty small to be efficient. You've got 16 to 17 inch wheels depending, and the mirrors are gonna be heated only optional on the SV and standard on the SL, and signals in those mirrors only on the SL trim. But dimensionally, the Leaf is 176 inches long, which is fairly small and maneuverable, very easy to drive around, although it does not have an independent suspension, so ride comfort and handling may be a little sacrifice compared to some competitors. And as you come around the back, you're still gonna get some bulbous design from Nissan, kind of a floating roof line, an aerodynamic spoiler off the back, and even a zero emission badge on it as well. Now as we take a look at the cargo area for the Leaf, so first of all, if I can find it, you don't get a power like remote activated lift gate, but there is a touch pad with the smart key system. And then once you get back here, you got a really deep area behind the second row. It's actually 23 and a half cubic feet pretty spacious. There's no plugins or anything like that back here, which would be nice to see. Uh, there is a removable cover on the top trim only and a tire repair kit, but no actual spare tire. The second row can fold in a 60 40 fashion and it's going to give you 30 cubic feet. But the biggest thing is that the seats on the second row are so much higher than they are in the actual cargo floor. So that can kind of throw off some of your packing plans, but still you got a nice space back here considering the size of the vehicle. Now for 2020, Nissan is all in on their safety and you get Nissan Safety Shield 360, which basically gives you a safety feature all around the vehicle. It's like your own little personal bubble in your Nissan Leaf, plus a couple extra safety features on the inside that I'll show you in a second. So the Nissan Safety Shield gives you automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, rear automatic braking, blind spot warning with rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, and high beam assist. And those are standard on every single trim. Plus we even have the Nissan Pro Pilot 360 that we'll go through in the test drive. Now, as you hop into the front seats of the Nissan Leaf, the nice thing is that it's not as low as some cars, but it's not as high as SUVs. It's a really nice height to get in if you have mobility issues. The two lower models, the S and the SV, are gonna give you cloth six-way manual seats, optional on the SV and standard on the SL, the top trim that we have right here, you're gonna get heated eight-way power adjustable seats with two-way lumbar support. And the SEL also adds leather, so the SEL only is gonna give you leather appointed seats. There's no memory functions for the seat or uh, ventilated seats, which would be nice to see at this price point. Seat comfort overall is good. The seat cushion is soft. You've got nice bolstering on the sides. The material on the seat is good. It's a nice shaped seat, but the contouring on my upper back is not my favorite. But overall, I've still been comfortable in these Nissan Leaf seats. And I have plenty of room, headroom, shoulder room. It's a little bit tight by my knees with this widening console in the door. But overall, most people should fit in here pretty comfortably. You will get a leather steering wheel on the SV trim and up. It is manual tilt and telescoping it's got a good enough range of motion i haven't had any complaints with that and it's going to be heated on our sl trim and that's optional on the sv trim as well and the entire steering wheel is heated and as a bonus something that i really appreciate is the fact that now every single model for 2020 is going to give you driver and front passenger knee supplemental airbags so crashes at least you're going to have a little more protection around your knees and your lower legs now taking a look at the inside, the interior is the usual Nissan gliding wing design. It does look and feel outdated compared to some other vehicles that we've recently been in for 2020 model year, but it has an open and airy feel for the most part. Starting out over on the door, I would like to see the quality of the material over here improved 
considering the price. This upper portion is hard touch if you like to have your arm up there, but this has a softer touch and so does the armrest. Only the driver's window is automatic up down. Since we don't have memory seats, there's no memory function, but my water bottle fits pretty well and there's a nice size storage bin. So standard on every trim, you get Nissan's smart key system. So that means you get push button start, foot on the brake, button right there, and it's even got a nice little blue light to it. And when you start up the vehicle, since we are electric, it's totally quiet. Now just to the left of the steering wheel, you have a few different buttons for your charge timing, open up your charging port, heated steering wheel, and your Nissan Pro Pilot Assist. The steering wheel here is fairly comfortable. It does even have a little bit of a flat bottom design. You have some blue stitching on the inside as well. Little sport grips right here. It's been comfortable to hold on to. Steering wheel controls are also easy to use. You can control your cruise control, radar cruise, all of that phone settings over here. And then on the left, you can control your information display right up above. And then right in front, every leaf is gonna give you the same setup with the physical gauge on the right and digital on the left. That is a seven inch screen and you can see the range that you have left all the time down there, which is nice how much percentage of your battery is there, kind of like a cell phone. This is actually kind of like a tachometer. So when you drive, it's gonna move up kind of like you're accelerating or your RPMs are going up and then back down, that's gonna show you if you're recharging the battery or if it's recapturing part of the battery. So there are several different screens that you can scroll through from settings to any kind of warning information, uh, specific fuel economy, and right there, so 4.1 miles per, per kilowatt hour. Um, that has not been the entire time I reset that part way through, but that's with mixed city and highway driving, so that is very impressive. You can see your audio, and then some more charging information over here, and of course you can scroll through various information on here as well. So what I like is that if you just do the regular plug, the 120 volt plug, it's gonna tell you how long it's gonna take. So 18 hours if I wanted to charge that up. And I'll talk about charge times and faster charge times uh, in a little bit here. I think I would have to say my biggest disappointment with this interior is that I'm not, a, I'm not always, you know, I don't really care how things necessarily look, but it just feels outdated in here. It does not feel like a 2020 electric vehicle. Now every model is also going to give you this 8 inch touch screen. This is the gliding wing design. It is kind of mounted up on here without being tablet style. So you can customize your screens on here. You have shortcuts, physical buttons on the side, go straight to your audio here as well. And speaking of audio, you're going to have anywhere from a 4 to 6 to 7 speaker Bose system. We have the 7 speaker Bose system on our top SL trim. It does sound nice. Uh, you have a volume and tuning knob. You have more shortcuts over there. You can see we have Sirius XM, you'll have navigation, Sirius XM, and HD radio on the SV and SL trims. And standard now, for every model, you're going to get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, even on the base models. And one cool feature is if you put it into reverse, or if you just hit this button, you've got the surround or intelligent view camera here. So first of all, we do have parking sensors for the back, which are actually really loud and annoying, even if you turn the volume down on them. But still, we have a generic uh, camera looking out the front right there. You can have a camera looking straight out the back. You've got this top-down view over here on this camera. And if I go ahead and actually put it in reverse, that'll show you that. You've got dynamic lines. But the only thing is that the clarity of this is not the best, but it's perfectly functional and can help you park pretty well. Now just below that, you've got your AC controls. Every model is going to give you the same setup right here, which is a single zone climate control. No dual zone, uh, but it's not that big of a vehicle. But I wish you could see the actual temperature on here or kind of know where you are in the range of your temperature. Like if the camera's on, I'm adjusting the temperature. I have no idea what the temperature is. You can have it on auto. You can customize it yourself. And then down below, you have your heated seat button, so they're rocker switches. You just got two setting, high or low, 12 volt power outlet, USB type C and regular USB with a little slot that's not actually wireless charging. It kind of looks like it could be wireless charging, uh, but it's just a good spot for your phone or wallet or what have you. And then right behind there is where you have your eco button and E pedal. So I will tell you what E pedal does in the test drive in a little bit. Our shifter is interesting. This is the pattern. The actual shifter's right here. It just sits right in the middle. It's just this, this little knob. So if you want to park, you just press that down for P. If you want to go to drive, over, and then down. If you want to go to reverse, over, and then up. 
and it always resets back to the middle and then press park if you want to park this is glossy black this does get some lint some fingerprints even a couple little scratches that are on here already and this car doesn't even have a thousand miles at least with the shifter right here it's small so it's easy to reach up here right there let me know your thoughts on that right down here you've got your electronic parking brake you've got your bottle holders which are decent size they accommodate my bottle but they don't have accommodators for larger or smaller drinks a rear view mirror is automatic dimming which is always nice otherwise you'll get a manual flip mirror this also has uh, three garage controls you also get sunglass holder get some lights up above and there's actually no moonroof now i'm not 100 percent sure the reasoning for that but there's no moonroof in here at all even on our top trim one possibility with the moonroof is that it could add some weight uh, and top heaviness but one dis one thing that i'm not a fan of is first of all the pillar is the pillar itself isn't that big but with combined with that especially when i'm looking out this way that really kind of impedes vision uh, in a sense. I kind of like how you have these little windows. That is kind of neat, but I wish it was just a skinny pillar. Uh, it really doesn't need to be a two piece like that because that does have the potential of blocking vehicles. Now, as you get to the back seat of the Nissan Leaf, this is where things get a little more tight. Now, sitting behind myself, I can sit here okay. And this is almost actually like stadium seating because we have the battery pack at the bottom of the vehicle. So this back seat, sits a little higher than the front seats so you can actually kind of see over the headrest and have a nice view which can actually help uh, with motion sickness and car sickness although this is kind of tight you've got to remember the dimensions of the vehicle which it's a really short vehicle 176 inches so this is still not bad you've got seat back pockets for both seats you've got two usb ports back here there's just no direct ventilation back here but the top two trims can give you rear under seat uh, heater ducts so you're gonna get a little bit of airflow back here but not much and one thing that's disappointing is there's not actually a center folding armrest there's cup holders in the door but otherwise no armrest for your passengers and there's a really big hump in the middle so people aren't really gonna be able to sit in the middle all that well but another big thing that Nissan did with safety just like the front all 2020 models now they don't have the neat airbags but you've got seat mounted side airbags so that's just awesome. I love that Nissan is going for a safe car with this Leaf. Now I don't really know why I have the hood up because we don't have an internal combustion engine. The Nissan Leaf is all electric. You've got a couple different options. You've got the regular Leaf uh, with all its trims with a 40 kilowatt hour battery. And then you've got a 62 kilowatt hour battery with the Leaf Plus. So you can get all the trims with the lower one or all the trims with the higher one and it can give you up to 226 miles of range. The power and torque really aren't too bad on this vehicle, especially this size of a vehicle. And this bigger battery pack that we have that sits under the vehicle or at the base of the vehicle helps with improved passing power at higher speeds. And I've had no trouble with this and we'll talk about that in the test drive in just a bit. And to top it off, with the, with the uh, electric battery, uh, which is not under here, but under the vehicle, you've got an eight year or 100,000 mile warranty on that. Now charging the Nissan Leaf is really convenient. You've got this little flap where you can open it up just like a gas tank on the inside of the vehicle. You've got two charging ports, one's a fast charger and one's a conventional charger. The nice thing about a conventional charger is that you can just plug it into a 120 volt, three prong outlet in your garage and charge this thing even though it takes quite a while you can still do that every day if you want and probably maintain a charge otherwise you can bump it up to 50 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt dc fast charging on the other side the plus models with the bigger battery are going to get a 100 kilowatt capability to charge otherwise the uh, fast charging for 50 kilowatt is optional on the lower trims and as far as charge times go um, it really depends on what battery you have, but I'll put a picture up so you can see the charge times for each individual vehicle. And one thing is that with electric vehicles, since you don't have the noise from a gas engine, they have to emit their own sounds, its regulations. And for 2020, to meet those regulations, Nissan had to bump that up. When you're backing up, you kind of have a loud pulsing sound. And when you're driving under about 19 miles an hour, you have this kind of eerie alien type electric sound. All right, everyone, we are getting off in the test drive on this Nissan Leaf. So first of all, I'm going to put it in e-pedal mode, pull back on the little switch down there. 
and without even touching the brake, the car is going to just stop on your own. This is how you can actually drive with just one pedal. So, of course, you can still use your brake, and you probably will need to sometimes, but push on the accelerator, let off the accelerator, and it'll stop. So the car recaptures all of your kinetic energy, all of your forward momentum, uh, and, and just like hybrids do in other electric cars, but it's to the point to where as soon as you let off the gas pedal, even going down this hill, the regenerative brakes are in action and the car is going to stop and it's not going to move until you push on the accelerator again. So that's called e-pedal. Um, some of the other electric cars I've been in have had similar type of operations. So I'm going to keep it in e-pedal for just a little bit. I'll put it in eco mode and normal mode, just the regular mode. So I didn't even have to push on the brake to go right here. I'm just stopped, just kind of waiting. It is a little bit weird driving like that. Acceleration and first impression in the leaf. When you're in e-pedal or even eco mode, it almost feels like you are kind of driving through mud, like you're driving through and against resistance. Um, but once you get out of normal mode, this thing feels pretty swift. And in terms of drivability and the way the steering feels, the weight of the steering is not annoyingly light or heavy. It's actually a pretty good amount and it's quite responsive. It's more responsive than I was expecting, but when you're gonna pay $46,000, you would hope that it is. So I'm still on e-pedal. We're just kind of cruising along. And if I go ahead and get on it, ooh, you get some electric power instantly. And then I let off and it slows me down. It recaptures a whole bunch of energy. So the thing about driving an electric car is the torque. So with a gas engine, the RPMs have to move up. You have to rev the engine. You have to um, wait a little bit for one the transmission to shift and two uh, for the actual power to come out of the engine but with an electric car as soon as you put the pedal down it goes so most of you aren't going to drive an electric car like that at all but if you need it you have the power uh, merging passing power all of that pretty much a breeze in the Nissan Leaf at least for this plus model uh, which has improved passing power over the regular model so now I put it in eco mode, I took e-pedal off, and if I let off the gas, it's not gonna completely quickly slow me down like e-pedal does, but it captures the energy again with the regenerative brakes, just like hybrids, and what that does is it helps to sustain your battery life and your battery power. And it'll show you on your screen depending on what um, setting you have that on. So. To get the most efficient driving out of the Leaf, it would be good to keep it in e-pedal or eco so you can capture any energy that's possible so you don't lose any energy or you lose the minimal amount. And then you can monitor and watch just how efficient you're driving. Now, in terms of braking, you're not gonna have to brake very often at all, really. Um, if you have e-pedal, you'll hardly ever need it. It's gonna be regenerative braking. Same with eco. Um, but the brake feel, it's pretty good. It's, it's responsive enough. Now I just took it out of eco mode and for just one time, I'm going to go ahead and get on it. Uh, no eco mode, no e-pedal. This is just the normal driving mode. Like if you're going to pass somebody, if you're going to merge onto an interstate or something and you need to get on it, or you just want to feel electric power. And that was 60. So this car is pretty quick. It does not look like a quick car, uh, but being an electric car, it's going to move. It's going to get up and move. I'm going to put eco mode back on. And in terms of handling, the one benefit to these electric cars is the battery packs are huge and they're very heavy. And they're situated low within the vehicle. So this is at the base of the vehicle, the bottom of the vehicle. And that helps to give you a nice... Uh, center of gravity it lowers the center of gravity so when you're going around corners like that you've got some confidence with your handling and with the way that this feels in fact here comes an old Nissan Leaf I really think these new ones definitely look better than the old ones no offense if you drive an old one now right up here I'm gonna put Nissan Pro Pilot 360 on you can push a button on the steering wheel and you'll see everything show up in front of you which is handy and then there's a little steering wheel icon for steering assist. 
on the left over there. Now let's go ahead and hit start. It locks in green. And I'm just gonna, I don't always, I don't do this, I don't let go, but I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna kind of nudge it over. And there you go. The Nissan Pro Pilot 360. I'd like to get a video on just this and how well it works if I can get um, another car or something with as many of the features as possible. And after a while, it's gonna tell you to grab the wheel, but the radar cruise control, the adaptive cruise control has worked very well. Uh, it slowed me down, it sped me up fairly responsively and quickly. But here's the thing with the Nissan Leaf. For a daily driver, this is nice. It's practical enough, it's comfortable enough. You've got the electric power, you can plug it in overnight just in your house, you can quick charge if you need to. But the thing is, this car as it sits is $46,000. This interior, the way it feels, the way it drives, some of the features it has and doesn't have, do not match the $46,000 price point in my opinion. Now we're just gonna get on a rougher surface and one thing about electric cars is you don't have noise from a gas engine. And I wasn't able to get the same decibel rating tests that I usually do with the Leaf, but it's been a fairly quiet ride. Even on a rougher surface like this, it seems to absorb some of that sound. Now when I got on higher speeds, even though this is an aerodynamic car, I still had some wind noise kind of around these pillars, which is which is kind of surprising considering the aerodynamics, but um, that's just one thing. It's not loud by any means, but something to consider. Ergonomics wise, the screen is in a good spot. The buttons down there are in a good spot. Um, I wish that things were maybe a little bit different in terms of how they function. This is hard up on the door. Um, I'm a little squished with this center console down here, uh, but otherwise it's still an easy vehicle to live with. And when it comes down to it, if you're looking for an eccentric electric car, a hatchback, you're good to go with the Nissan Leaf. However, there are more and more hybrids and electric cars out there. And if you're cross shopping this in one of those, let me know what you're thinking down below. Let's go ahead and wrap things up on the Nissan Leaf. To wrap things up on the 2020 Nissan Leaf, if you want an electric vehicle with some practicality, you've got a good option right here. It's got a healthy amount of range. It's convenient to charge. You've got a good warranty on the battery as well. But if you're looking for some of the niceties, some nicer materials, some more features, especially for a vehicle priced at $46,000, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. For the price, I wish Nissan would have upgraded some things, made things a little bit nicer considering some of the newest electrical competition. But I love the fact that Nissan is safety minded. You get a lot of that stuff in here and even some new additions for this 2020 model, but you're really gonna be paying the premium for the electric vehicle. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out some of these other videos and subscribe for weekly videos on all kinds of cars. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll catch you next time.